going over IRS Form 8814, Parents' Election to Report Child's Interest in Dividends. So taxpayers might use this tax form uh, to report their child's interest in dividend income so that their child does not have to file their own income tax return. Parents can make this election if you, your child meets all of the following conditions. First, the child was either under age 19 at the end of the tax year, or if they're a full-time student, the child was under the age of 24 by the end of the tax year. The child's only income was from interest and dividends, and this would include either capital gain distributions or Alaska Permanent Fund dividends. The child's gross income for the year was less than $11,500. If the child was otherwise required to file a tax return, but does not file a joint tax return as a married tax as a married uh, couple, if there were no esti estimated tax payments for the child for the tax year, and this would include any overpayments from the previous tax year that were carried forward on Form 1040, and finally, if there was no federal income tax withheld from the child's income. So those are the requirements for a child uh, to, uh, to qualify. Uh, parents also have to meet certain criteria to, uh, to file this form. So uh, you'll want to make sure you understand what criteria those are. Specifically, uh, parents need to uh, file a joint. You qualify. Uh, if you meet any of the following criteria. It, a, you file a Form 1040, 1040SR, or 1040NR, but then uh, any of the following must apply as well. So one, filing a joint return with the child's other parent. Uh, if you and the child's other parent were married to each other but filed separate returns and you had the higher taxable income. Uh, three, if you were unmarried treated as unmarried for tax purposes or otherwise separated from the other parent by a divorce or separate maintenance decree. The child must have lived with you for most of the year in that you were the custodial parent. Uh, if you were the custodial parent and then you remarried, you can make the election on a joint return with your new spouse. But if you and your new spouse don't file a joint return, you only qualify if you had higher taxable income. So make sure you understand both the child's uh, criteria and the parent's criteria. But basically, these rules exist so that uh, parents can't cherry pick the most favorable uh, tax bracket um, based on the choice of taxpayer. So uh, these rules kind of are established by the IRS to nudge the parent to the to the right parent uh, with the higher ta taxable income. So uh, just understand that filing this form might be a convenience in that you don't have to file a tax return on, on your child's behalf, but these uh, this interest in dividend income uh, may be taxed at your income tax bracket, which means that you would probably pay more taxes and you cannot take certain tax benefits that your child could take on their own. So uh, just keep in mind, and there are, there are specific uh, uh, tax benefits outlined in the form instructions that you would not be able to take that would otherwise be uh, available to your child. Uh, so this would include an additional standard deduction of $1,750 if the child is blind. Uh, there would be uh, a penalty on the early withdrawal of uh, your child's savings, uh, itemized deductions that might be available to your child, such as con uh, charitable contributions. Uh, additionally, your increased adjusted gross income, because you're reporting this as your own income, could reduce certain deductions or credits on your own tax returns. So there might be an impact to uh, the deduction for IRA contributions, uh, student loan interest deduction, 
itemized deductions for medical expenses uh, because they're all dependent on adjusted gross income, the credit for child and de dependent care expenses, the child tax credit, education tax credits, and the earned income credit all have either uh, phase outs or AGI limitations that might be impacted if you choose to include your child's interest and dividend income as, uh, as part of your own. So with that said, uh, let's go through the form itself. So you'll attach this form to your Form 1040 as you, as you file your tax return, but it's straightforward. It's a one-page tax form. You see at the top, we put in our hero's name, John Doe, Social Security number. Uh, there is the caution uh, at the very top saying that you could uh, miss out on certain tax benefits. The tax on your child's income could be uh, less if you filed a separate return for the child. On the other hand, your tax preparation fee may go up and it might be a wash anyway. So, um, so in block A, you'll put the child's name, first initial, uh, first initial or middle initial and last name, then the social security number. If you have more than one form, uh, 8814, you would check this box. We're going to walk through this one and we'll just assume that this is the only one. So John is de deciding to include his daughter, Sarah Doe's uh, income as part of his income. Uh, from here, you're basically entering uh, uh, at the top th three areas, you're entering information that's been reported to you. So taxable interest, we'll just put $100 of taxable interest here. Uh, tax exempt interest would go into line 1B. This is not, so there's either taxable interest or tax exempt. They should not be subsets of each other. So we'll put that she earned $50 of tax exempt interest. Um, so in block 2A, uh, you would enter your child's ordinary dividends. So this would include any Alaska Permanent Fund dividends. If your child received dividends as a nominee, then you should see the form instructions. So basically, um, you would enter the dividends that actually belong to another person. You would enter the amount and then write ND on the dotted line next to the tax return or next to the line. But do not include those amounts as part of your 2A. So we'll just say that she had $500 of dividends. And then block 2B, we're going to enter the qualified dividends. So they're, they're ordinary dividends that are eligible for the same lower tax rate as a net capital gain. So of the $500, we'll just say that $100 was uh, a qualified dividend. Uh, capital gain distributions, these are, you'll see these reported on, on your form 1099, uh, would be part of your dividend statement. So uh, if you have mutual funds, uh, usually towards the end of the year, like in December, they'll distribute all of the capital gains that were realized within the fund, they'll distribute that to all the mutual fund shareholders. So we'll just say that there's $100 of capital gains distributions. In line four, we just total up lines 1A, 2A, and 3. So uh, we come to $700. In line five, we'll use this base amount. So 2300 uh, and we'll subtract line five from line four. Uh, we come up with zero. It's actually a negative number, but so if lines 2B and zero and 3 are either zero or blank, then you can skip all of this. Uh, you can enter zero on line 11 and then go to line 12. Uh, so they're not blank, uh, so we have to go through each of these steps in order. So. Um, line 2B divided by line 4. When we do the calculation, uh, we get...
something on, along the lines of one four three. Line three divided by line four is the same. One four three. Uh, we'll multiply line six by line seven, uh, which was zero and then zero. And then we'll put zero for line 11. And then we'll subtract a line 11. So basically what happened, because $2,300 uh, is kind of the, there, there's a cutoff. Um, there's the amount that's not taxed. That's the first $1,150. And then the next uh, $1,150 is taxed at a 10% tax rate. So uh, while this formula kind of didn't work out, uh, let's imagine a bigger number. Uh, let's, let's imagine that all of these are a little bit bigger. So now we've got $7,000. I just added a zero to every one of these income items. So now we have $7,000 of income. We subtracted $2,300 from that. And now we've got $4,700 left over. Now, these numbers won't change because it's the same fraction. But when we multiply line six by line seven, we're going to get $671, and we're going to get the same amount here. And then we're going to add those two right here, and we get $1,342. And then we would subtract uh, line 11 from line 6. So and that would give us $3,357. So in the first example, we had zero. We didn't have to include any of that in line 8z because uh, we, we basically didn't have any, any tax on the child's income. But when we include this $3,350, uh, now we're going to have to put that in Schedule 1 on line 8z. Uh, next to this in the space next to that line you can enter form 80, 8814 show the amount uh, if you check the box on line C above then you would need to uh, total up all of the outstanding 8814s uh, to be able to uh, continue this so you'll add all the amounts from 8814 you'll include the net result from that total uh, on schedule 1 Schedule 1, line 8Z. So you would enter the form ADA 14 plus the total from all of the line 12s. So in part two, we simply calculate the tax on the first $2,300 of your child's uh, interest and dividends. So uh, this is the amount that's not taxed at all. It's $1,150. So that's why we didn't have any taxable income up here um, because we were under that. We were well below this threshold. So we'll subtract line 13 from line 4, and that gives us 5850. Now, uh, the tax on this, uh, well, if the amount on line 14 is less than 1150, then um, you would multiply line 14 by 10% uh, to get. You know, the amount of tax on that amount from between $1,151 and $2,300. So since our child's you know, taxable income is well above $2,300, we're going to go ahead and just uh, say that we'll put the $115 here. Um, that takes us up to the $2,300 of the child's interest and dividends. And then the remaining amount, the $35.50 or so, 
is going to be taxed at the parent's tax rate. So um, you'll include the amount from line 15 in the tax that you enter on line 16 of your form 1040 and make sure that you check box one on your form 1040 line 16. So that's all we have for this tax form. It's fairly straightforward. And again, you know, you have to weigh uh, the tax deductions that you might lose for including your child's income items in your tax return versus the tax preparation costs that you would incur if you took your tax return out to a professional and, and had them prepare a separate tax return for parents and the child. So um, speak with your tax professional before you make that decision. But um, so as I said, that's all we have for this tax form. If you want, we go into much more detail in the article uh, that we wrote uh, covering this tax form. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS form 8814 in the search bar, and you should see our article. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.